Good evening and welcome to the public hearing of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. It is April 6, 2021. It is 6.30 p.m. Call the public hearing to order. Uh, this is a public hearing for the uh, appointment of an interim alderman. This was published in the legal section of the Murfreesboro Post on Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. Um, the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Alderman is to hold a public hearing tonight. The purpose of the hearing is to consider the following item, appointment of an interim alderman. This public hearing is open to the public and all citizens and media are invited to attend and participate. I'll open up the podium. Anyone can come forward and speak. You will need to state your name and address for the record. Podium is open if anyone would like to speak. Good evening. My name is Gloria Beeler. I live at 585 Hollandale Road here in Laverne. And I would like to speak on Megan Honeycutt's uh, for her character. I'm a minister that is affiliated with Grace Community Church. And our church has joined with, with the board on many occasions with her pastor and, and everything. And knowing Megan, she's a, a lady that has integrity. She's, she's a go-getter. When um, she puts her mind to it, she goes, seeks it through. When um, she faces a difficult chase, uh, task and she doesn't know how to do it, she'll find somebody that will and to get to the answer and everything. And it would be an honor to have her on the board and serve with you guys and so that we can continue with our church and joining with everybody. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Again, the podium is open. If you'd like, anyone would like to come forward and speak. Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. Um, I too would like to speak on behalf of Megan Honeycutt. My name is Christina McNamara, uh, 403 Noel Lane in Smyrna, 37167. Um, first, I'd like to speak on behalf of Megan professionally. Um, she always has the utmost integrity. I, I speak on behalf of her because I was her supervisor directly. Um, she always rises to the occasion, maintains the professionality, and uh, she has the integrity that I think would you would see fit for this position. Um, she's not always been a Laverne resident, but when she wasn't, she always has been. Um, I can speak on her volunteering with the uh, Laverne Rescue Squad. She always had one foot out the door when we worked together at the restaurant, ready to go take action and help people in need. Um, and. I think Megan Honeycutt would be a great addition to the team. So thank you. Thank you. Again, the podium is open. If anyone would like to come up and speak, now is the opportunity. Good evening, board. My name is Aaron Holliday, and I am a candidate for the appointment uh, for an alderman. Uh, in 1996, I moved to the Hickory Woods development, which is just across the uh, creek, and uh, lived there until 2004 when I moved into my home here in Laverne. Since that time, I've served in various capacities, uh, including serving on the executive committee of the Republican Party uh, from 2010, I'm sorry, from 2008 to 2010. In 2010, I began service in the Rutherford County School Board. Um, 2018, after eight years of service uh, as Laverne's representative to the Rutherford County School Board, uh, I ran for alderman uh, in 2018. Uh, in that same year, I was an applicant for alderman as uh, Mayor Cole moved into uh, the mayor's seat and there was an opening for an alderman to be appointed. In 2020, I was an applicant for alderman when there was an opening on the board and uh, there was an alderman to be appointed. Again, tonight in 2021, I'm an applicant for alderman. There's been some conversation, uh, as I have observed your uh, deliberation on this, as to whether or not candidates for alderman would be uh, ca candidates in future elections. It would indeed be my intention to not only seek the appointment tonight, but also uh, seek election in the next election for alderman. Um, in the city of Laverne, I've eaten lunch at the Senior Center, I've eaten breakfast at the Rescue Squad, I've watched fireworks at Veterans Park, 
I had Thanksgiving dinner at Laverne Middle School. I've gone to story time at the Laverne Library. I've walked the Greenway, and I've disposed of all of my family's garbage on Sand Hill Road in the correct dumpster or recycling receptacle. <laughs> uh, I have also been responsible personally for the construction of Stewart's Creek High School, which benefits Laverne, the making of the motion for the expansion of Rock Springs Elementary, adding, to the, adding the stage expansion to the Roy Waldron Elementary for the sake of our War Roy Waldron Drama Club, making the motion for the design of the expansion of Laverne Middle School, bringing the Roy Waldron Elementary Drama Club to the attention of our school board with multiple performances in the boardroom, and I created the Dual Enrollment Academy at Laverne High School, which has awarded thousands of hours of college credit to students in their junior and senior years through a cooperative program with Cumberland University as well as Motlow Community College. I did all of this because Laverne is not to be overlooked. That was my mantra as a school board member. Do not take us for granted. Um, I defended our city. I worked on a budget there from 248 to 300 million dollars during the uh, time that we were uh, in service for 2010 to 2018 and I dealt with many issues, not the least of which were issues of public safety, which are certainly issues that this board uh, addresses. A public sa safety issue came before the school board that law enforcement, our SRO officers, could make better use of long guns in certain situations. And as such, it was the responsibility of the school board to make sure that those long guns could be inside of a school. And yet they weren't always going to be on the person of the law enforcement. We had to weigh the priority of having the use of that weapon and yet having it safe inside of a school. So the school board voted to purchase gun safes for every school so that our law enforcement could have the use of those weapons. I highlight this because public safety is one of the key components of being a alderman here in the city of Laverne. In addition to this, I dealt with several issues of concerns with minorities and genders. Were I to be appointed, uh, we would be a board of mayor and aldermen of all white males. And I want to highlight the fact that I am very aware of that fact and would make it an initiative to understand, reach out, and make sure that other minorities uh, or, or not genders that may not be represented on this board in a physical uh, characteristic would be represented by my service. Um, I feel that I have shown a commitment to the city of Laverne as I currently serve on the Planning Commission. I feel that I have shown a commitment to the position of alderman. And in closing, I'd just like to highlight as a citizen, number one, that I've learned from Alderman Coates to come prepared. The city budget, as well as the city code, were I to be appointed, I am prepared to serve this evening. In addition to that, I encourage you that this be a four to nothing vote. That signals to all of Rutherford County that Laverne is not to be overlooked, that we are a united front and we know exactly the direction that we are heading. I would like to be that alderman that you appoint this evening. I would like to serve alongside you and I feel like I uniquely have qualifications and a proven track record to represent all of us very well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Again, the podium is open if anyone would like to speak that's in this room. Uh, you can come up to the podium, state your name and address. Anybody else in the room that would like to speak? Should have known better than to ask that. Mayor, Alderman, citizens watching, thank you for allowing me to come up here and speak on, to you. Everybody that has known me for however long of a time they've known me know that, hey, I'm a Laverne homeboy. I was a Laverne citizen before we got annexed into the city. I do not take this lightly. I have always, always stood up for the city of Laverne. 
A lot of people don't remember back in the late 70s, early 80s, when our police departments had to wash their own cars. Be nothing to see us down there helping wash them. Then when I got into business and opened up a restaurant here in the city, as a franchise, uh, police officers were always welcome. I have the utmost respect for our police department. That is why when I was teaching karate, I extended uh, free classes to any law enforcement agent, whether it be Smyrna, Laverne, TBI, FBI, yes, and there were a few of them that come through there too. But my way of giving back to them for what they have given to me, which is peace of mind and security. I've always been a supporter of the Laverne Rescue Squad. Yeah, I was a rescue squad brat and proud of it. Back before we had a fire department, they were first responders. Anytime things came up, there'd be times that, hey, that call would come in, mom would come in and say, hey, John, I've got to go. I knew that. And so I took care of the house while she went and took care of our home, our community. I was a very much a supporter of the Laverne Volunteer Fire Department. Over 18 years, I was a member of the Volunteer Fire Department. Never once did I go out on a call. I was considered their good luck charm. But luck could only go so far. Now that we have our own fire department. They have my full support and anytime they need anything from me, all they have to do is ask. The things that I've, people say, you know, well, you know, he's been here for 60 years, but we haven't seen him around. Now that's because I, during the 80s, I was making a living. About a part of the 90s when I had children, I decided to devote my time and follow my children. That's why I got involved with the Cub Scouts. Coming pack master was just the icing on the cake. Being a den master, a den leader, it just, it's fun. Pack masters were the most fun is because your main job is to have fun with the boys, make sure that they've got the equipment they need. And if that means calling up some of the fathers, say, hey, let's go here scrapyard over here and see if we can't get something for these boys to work on their awards. Every spring and every fall, they would come Camp Skinner, camp out. We're talking great times. We've had as many as 30 tents up there on the back side of our property, which, which is Camp Skinner. But it's the children that you fall in love with. The benefit to that is you get to know their parents, many of them of which who I still associate with today because they are citizens of our community still. Most other things I've done has been on a volunteer basis, but like I said last time I was standing right here, that's the thing that I'm most proud of. You don't have to pay me to do something I do it out of love. And when it comes to this city, I have nothing but love. I've always been there for the city and the city so far. Except in the very recent past, it's been there for me. I will continue to be as good a citizen as I possibly can be. I would like to be an alderman. I'd like to be up there with all you guys. I have personally talked to all of y'all at some time. Uh, some more than others, of course, but that doesn't matter at all. I want to be a positive force to move this city forward. We only have so much square acreage of land left in our city to develop. Well, it's time that we start working on the things that we need to, our infrastructure. I see the reports. I'm here at the meetings. I see what we're going through. And I know you just can't, you know, wish that money would come to you, and it does. Sometimes you have to go out and get it. 
I'm not afraid to go ask. I'm not afraid at all. I think that should be, that in itself should be a reason that I should get your consideration. Because as you know, I'm gonna do what it takes to get the job done. And being an alderman means very much to me. I hold you guys in the highest, highest respect. And I would like that respect reciprocated. So if you would, I would appreciate your consideration. I may not know how to do everything the job involves. I don't think any of y'all knew exactly what y'all were getting into when you got there. I'm not afraid. I consider myself to be an honest, moral, and respected and respectable person in this community. I can't be bought, but as you know, I can be coerced with chocolates. What can I say? Gentlemen, your consideration would be greatly appreciated. I thank you for your time, and I thank the citizens for your time. Again, the uh, podium is open to anyone who would like to come forward and speak. You just need to come forward, state your name and address, and the floor will be yours. There, there might be some candidates still in the hall. We might check and see if any of them. There, we've got the TV on out there for them so they can hear to come in. If you would, please state your name and address for the record. Balbalosa. I live at 4002 George Buchanan Drive. Um, I first want to thank you all for giving me the time to address the board. Um, I also want to thank you for uh, even considering me for this appointment. Um, I am grateful to be a citizen of Laverne. I have lived here uh, since 2006, um, as I stated in the previous meeting. Um, I am from the school of thought that if you see an opportunity to serve, if you see an opportunity to do something, that you do it. Um, so, which I found it interesting when I did a little bit of research on uh, the city to see that there was um, a general lack of diversity in a lot of areas and a lot of different boards and including this one. And I don't think that's uh, by accident. Um, I, growing up, I was always a child that asked why. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of questions and I still do. Um, but am I asking why? I wanted to know why so many people um, felt that it's not necessarily their duty, their responsibility, or that they don't have a place uh, in serving their community. Uh, they feel underrepresented, but they don't know what to do. They don't act and they don't feel that uh, they have a place, if you will. Um, and in my opinion, there's a, there's a lot of miscommunication. There's often a lack of trust. Uh, and there's um, often a lack of confidence. Um, to be clear, I don't feel that I am deserving of any position, um, if anyone can be deserving. I do feel, however, it is mine and every citizen in the city's responsibility to absolutely step up and do what they can to help the city to continue to grow. Um, that said, I've never run for any sort of public office or, or uh, commission or board seat because I find the things that I can do more on a, you know, person to person level. I'm definitely a peace, people person. Anyone that's ever met me knows that I am not a person that is uh, short on words, but I will be tonight. Um, but I like to get to know people. I like to know how they think and why they do the things that they do. I often hear um, things about Laverne feedback from other communities. Um, I have teenage children and they often come home and tell me how they heard from a friend at school that Laverne was ghetto. Uh, is a term that a lot of kids use uh, these days to describe our area. And I tell them to ask them, have you ever been to Laverne? You know me, what do you think of me? 
I've heard people complain about the crime in Laverne, and I often tell them I live in Laverne. Just like any other area, yeah, it may have its bad apples, but we are very much a community. Um, and I got a lot of feedback from friends, well, the few friends that I told about uh, this appointment, potential appointment, that um, you know, this is something that I'm interested in doing to encourage more people to step up and serve. And the first question that I got was, um, are you nervous? Because there's no one on the board that you know, really looks like you. And I told them absolutely not, because I wanna know why more people that look like me, that are my age, my demographic, don't step up and do more things to help. Like I said, I, I researched and there were several commissions that I didn't see many people who you know, served that were you know, under 35 you know, of African-American you know, descent or um, Latino background, none of that because, well not none, but very few. Um, and I think there is a general idea that, you know, things are going to get done, but somebody else is going to do it. And no one knows what your concerns are. No one knows what your feelings are. No one knows what your needs are unless you come forward to either speak on it or to ask or to, you know, to get involved. So more than anything, it is my hope that more people will step up and you know, come forward and do what they can to be better, more involved citizens because Laverne, needs, Laverne is one of the most diverse areas uh, in Middle Tennessee. And I love that about Laverne. That's one of the, the reasons why I've been here so long. And I feel like more of our boards and commissions need to reflect that uh, because there's a very unique way that people move throughout their space when they know they're represented, when they know that um, they are a part of a community, when they know that their ideas and, and their values are uh, appreciated, they get more involved, they take more pride in it, they are, um, they're happier living in that space. And most of the people that I've met that live in Laverne have either been here for a long time or have no intention of going anywhere, and that means something. So um, again, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to um, to come forward and to uh, step in this place. I, um, like I said, I, I've never run for anything uh, and not that I don't feel the need to, I just feel like, you know, there are other things that I can do to help that doesn't necessarily need my name in the front and center, uh, but I am here to support. I have no intention on backing off um, whether I'm appointed or not. I will continue to serve in the community. I can't wait to uh, continue to work in different areas to help Laverne continue to grow. Um, I wish all the best to uh, the, um, the new alderman who is appointed, um, and I hope that uh, Laverne will continue to grow and, and reflect uh, its true demographic in the city. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Again, the podium is open if anyone would like to come forward and speak. Now is the time. If there's anybody in the room or outside in the hallway that would like to come forward and speak, now would be the time. Hello, everyone. Aaron Alderman, staff, citizens. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for the opportunity for the application. It's been a great pleasure working with and serving the city for a number of years. Uh, one of the, you know, First things I'd like to say, it's very nice to be first generation Wolverine and standing at the podium after all these long years since graduation. And so nice to do something for our class, class of 92. Um, so that's a very nice sentiment. Um, but once again, thank you for everything. It's been a very great honor and pleasure to have not only served, worked with, helped, and just been here for my community for a number of years. It's, it's really been an honor. I don't think most people would have had the opportunity that I would have had had it not been for some of the tutelage that I got from prior administrations and even long before being involved. Uh, the education that I gathered from them was, was quite honorable and 
welcomed and needed, and it helped shape my life, and the city has shaped, helped shape my life as well. So I would like to thank everybody, citizens, officers, everyone for the opportunity, and it would be a pleasure to do anything I can for the city and to continue working for and with the city. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Again, the podium is open. If anyone would like to come forward and speak, now is the time. If we've got anyone in the room or out in the hallway that would like to speak, you can come forward. I am Luann Grandinetti. I have lived at 153 Blair Road for 32 years. Good evening, gentlemen of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. You have my credentials before you, including my education, my work experience, my accomplishments, and my professional acknowledgments. When applying for a board in Laverne, references are required. Since this is also an appointed position, at least 11 individuals have sent professional and personal references on my behalf. Mr. Richardson and perhaps Mayor Cole, uh, were those shared with the board? Mr. Richardson, were those references shared? Well, this is a, a public hearing. It's not a dialogue uh, back and forth. Okay, well, I just ask a question since perhaps they weren't. Uh, let me acknowledge their efforts on my behalf. <clears throat> Paul Deggs, Chief Engineer and Deputy Commissioner of the Tennessee Department of Transportation, a former colleague and a friend. Lynn Williams, former member of the Nashville Metropolitan Council, also a friend. Kemi Woodle, Community Relations Consultant for Vanderbilt and former Director of the Civil Rights Division. Deanna Thomas, Director of Communications for the City of Brentwood and a former colleague. Ralph Comer, former planning director for the Tennessee Department of Transportation. Hooper Penuel, 12 year administrator of the Rutherford County Election Commission and formerly of the Tennessee Military Department. Nancy Sarter, local programs coordinator for Wiser Consultants in Murfreesboro. Sharon Fitzgerald, professor of journalism at Middle Tennessee State University, a former colleague. Don Boaz, Laverne resident and owner of b and Heating and Cooling in Laverne, Ann High, a friend and travel nurse, Jimmy Carter, uh, excuse me, Jimmy Carver, former minister of the Jefferson Pike Church of Christ and now at the Florence Road Church of Christ. The professionals I've listed are just a handful of hundreds of people with whom I've worked at the local, state, and national level for the 32 years I have been in public service. My resume and my references, I believe, qualify me to become the next alderman for Laverne. But let me tell you why I hope you will appoint me tonight. There are moments in your life where opportunities present themselves, and I believe one must take advantage of them and rise to the challenge. This is one for me. I have always been involved in government. The example I had was my mother. In 1959, she was a numerator for the U.S. Census Bureau. For six months, she went door to door, collecting information from households for that very important process that helps communities like Laverne receive their fair share of federal dollars. Mother got involved in political campaigns, including her father's, my grandfather's, when he ran for trustee of Smith County. Public service, government, and politics are closely aligned, and I've always been either involved or a close observer my adult life. That brings me to the reasons I'm standing here tonight. Becoming involved in the proposed development in our neighborhood lit a fire that I cannot smother. I want to be involved in Laverne government. Several months ago, I applied for the Economic Development Advisory Committee. And if I am unsuccessful this evening, I plan to continue to apply for other boards and commissions as you so often encourage, Mayor Cole. Secondly, I'm retired, energetic, and I have the time to devote to the city. Third, I have the desire to help move Laverne forward. And I have some ideas on that as well. 
As you can see from my resume, public information, community relations, and communications have been my life's work. Transportation has always been the topic that I've written and talked the most about over the last three decades. From right of way, bridge inspections, obligated dollars, asphalt versus concrete, diamond interchanges, rumble strips, local interstate connectors or LICs, ADTs, LOS, and BATs roosting under Tennessee's 19,000 plus bridges. I know about it all. I helped turn around the negative reputation TDOT had in 2003, deserved or not, as an agency who didn't care about the concerns and issues of communities during highway development. A major part of a gubernatorial campaign was built on TDOT needing to improve its relationship with the public. We changed. We did it by more public involvement, better communication, and getting out and discussing projects with communities to receive their much desired input. We changed processes steeped in tradition to new processes giving the communities the feelings they were really involved in road development that impacted them. It worked. Our strategies are transferable to Laverne. I've written public involvement plans and I've assessed their successes. My communications office launched the TDOT website. We started the 511 program. We launched the HELP program. And my office was the lead team in launching the social media platform that TDOT uses today. I was an integral part of the team which initiated the intelligent transportation system on our interstates in Tennessee, consisting of CCTVs, dynamic message boards, and a transportation management center in each of our four largest cities. I also claim credit, by the way, for submitting the name TDOT Smartway, eventually approved by the team. I've worked with our federal partners, the state legislature, city and county officials across Tennessee and leaders in many, many communities. Outreach communications and public involvement is the key in moving a city forward with the support of its citizens. Increased public involvement in city decisions is my number one priority if you appoint me. I will gladly assume the responsibility of writing a public involvement plan for the city to ensure the voices of our citizens are heard in the budget process, on zoning issues, on tax proposals, on strategic and long-term planning. My second priority is infrastructure. My experience has often been build it and they will come. While this is not always the best strategy, more often it is a valuable economic tactic. Look at State Route 840. When we cut the ribbon, on the section of I-40 to Murfreesboro, there was zero development. Take the drive now. You will see Amazon, Aldi's, Rooms to Go, Permabil, Starbucks, Thornton's, FedEx, O'Reilly's Auto Parts, Napa Auto Parts, Nissan Loves, Bridgestone and Firestone. Literally dozens of businesses were drawn to 840 because of the tremendous transportation infrastructure we built, yes. I know, Laverne is geographically constrained, but that does not mean we can't invest in improving current infrastructure to then attract residences and businesses that will become a value added investment for our city. I come to you tonight as a citizen of Laverne seeking your vote for Alderman. I promise you, if appointed, every decision I make will be for the greater good of all Laverne. I will do the required reading, I will do the research, and I will never abstain unless there is a conflict of interest. I will always be forthcoming and provide every detail I have at my disposal to our citizens. You and the citizens of this city will know where I stand and why I take that position. That's what's that's what good public servants do. They are transparent and they are informative. There are eight other candidates here tonight. To them I will state as I did to Alderman No last week. If you are selected, you have my full support for the next 20 months. Mayor Cole, Alderman Waldron, 
Alderman No and Alderman Coates. I would appreciate your votes. Thank you. Thank you. Again, the podium is open. If anyone would like to come forward and speak, now is the time, whether you're in the hallway or here in the room. Podium is open. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Lieutenant Call, do we have anybody else in the, in the lobby that would like to speak? I don't believe so. Okay. With that, seeing no one else wanting to speak, I will close out the public <coughs> forum May and we can take a quick break. We can take a, a quick 10 minute break. <coughs> with our board and our city staff help us make the right decisions for you we ask that you would touch this nation you would heal us and bring us all together in your wonderful name of jesus we pray amen amen, amen. face the flag Moving to the first order of business, resolution 2021-08, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to accept the resignation of Vice Mayor Melissa Brown and declare an aldermatic vacancy on the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. I'll make a motion to accept. Is there a second? A second. Second by Alderman No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. Item number two, motion to appoint new aldermen or make a motion to appoint Megan Honeycutt. Is there a second? A second for discussion. Okay, we have a second by Alderman No. I'll open up the floor, Alderman No. What I'm fixing to say is a true story. I was having a discussion on the phone with uh, one of the candidates last week and my son was in the uh, kitchen at the table working on his computer and he overheard the conversation and when I got done talking he said boy dad he said that person sounds pretty smart I said, yeah, I said, we got all our applicants and some of them are even smarter than that. And uh, he said, you know, it's a good thing that they didn't want those qualifications when you ran for alderman. <laughs> and I was dumbfounded. And I said, what do you mean, Jeremy? He said, well, dad, when you ran for alderman, he said, you was a truck driver a blue collar worker, you have absolutely no uh, political background, you don't have any political agenda, the only thing you ran on was you wanted to help the citizens and the city and be a part of things in the city, plus you wanted to volunteer. And there was a few other things said. And, for the rest of the evening, boy, I thought about that. I thought, so I hear all these, all this talk about qualifications. And I, I, I ran it through my head and through my head thinking, what, what qualifications does it take to be an alderman of Laverne? Or for that fact, in my mind, any city. Because I think political agendas are way overrated so I went back through the applicants and I went back through the letters and I readjusted my way of thinking a little bit and I thought you know I'm not you can't find somebody like yourself but 
I just want to think about this. So after going through there, I, I picked up the phone and I made a phone call. I said, I want to talk to this person. I want to know why you're up, why you want to run. Uh, just a bunch of questions and, and everything that I asked was pretty spot on. This person had a, a wonderful, in my opinion, a great mentor in this city. And anybody that knows Ricky McCormick or knew Ricky knew that Ricky was a great mentor, bar none. Matter of fact, I'd say if Ricky McCormick was in this boardroom tonight, there'd be a lot of different things going on. Because I knew Ricky well, and this person told me a bunch of stuff that uh, I thought, well, I wish I'd have known this. But I thought, what about your decisions, and what about all of the stuff? Because there's think, classes that I've taken, books that I've read, Two and a half years ago, I didn't even know they existed. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm saying that when I came into this, I came in with an open mind. We agree and we disagree. But I don't take it personally. We need somebody that can work with the board. We need somebody that's not going to be a stone wall, that's going to be open-minded, that we can set up here and have difference of opinions and not get worked up. Someone that'll do their homework. And everything that I talked to this person about, I like the answers. As far as qualifications, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know what those qualifications are. Almost, in my opinion, overqualified, if there's such a thing. But I'm a little surprised. I, I was trying, somebody asked me the other day, said, well, who do you think so-and-so is going to vote for? I said, I don't know. I can't tell. I can't read nobody. Then I talked with somebody today, just a uh, good friend of mine, so on one of my boards, and uh, that person had made some comments about you need to get somebody that will work with the citizens who will volunteer, who will go out and do stuff and uh, make it work. So... I'm going to put my vote, I'm going to agree with the mayor on Megan Honeycutt. Any other discussion? I, I, got, I think the, the mayor should resign his recognition because he, if it's a tie vote, he votes twice, and I think that puts everything in a uh, kind of a awkward situation. Uh, I, was, I was really hoping the mayor would let one of the board members uh, make the recommendation, but evidently he's not. So, but I figured this w would happen. I think somebody in the, in the audience earlier, I, I told them exactly what was going to happen, and, it, and, 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 they're, and they're proving me right. So, I have no other thing to say. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Alderman Walter? No. Alderman Coates? Aye. Alderman No? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. If you would please come forward and we'll bring in the judge. solemnly swear or affirm do solemnly swear or affirm to support the constitution and the laws to support the constitution and the laws 
of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution and laws of the state of Tennessee, and the Constitution and laws of the state of Tennessee, and the Charter and ordinances of the city of Laverne, and the Charter and the ordinances of the city of Laverne, that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, and impartially, and impartially, discharge the duties of my office, discharge the duties of my office, as alderman, as alderman, of the city of Laverne, of the city of Laverne, to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, and ability. And, ability. and I would like to mention that they might want to change this to alder person. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, woman. Either way, it'll work. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Next order of business will be motion to appoint a new vice mayor. Open the floor to any motions. I'll make a motion to, for Steve No. Okay, we have a motion for Steve No for vice mayor. Is there a second? I second. Second from Alderman Honeycutt. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. With that, motion passes. Congratulations, Vice Mayor No. Moving on to approve the minutes from the March 2nd, 2021 public hearing and the March 2nd, 2021 regular meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes as submitted. I have a motion to approve as submitted from Alderman Coates, our second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Moving on to presentations. Certificate of appreciation. If we could have Melissa Brown come down as well as bring in Representative Sparks and uh, State Senator Don White. Quickly, <laughs> but we wanted to present to you first from the City of Laverne, a certificate of appreciation to Melissa Brown for your dedication, time, and commitment to improving the City of Laverne and the quality of life for its residents. Your absence will not go unnoticed, and we wish you the best of luck in all of your future endeavors. State Senator Don White has something for you as well. Well, congratulations. Um, we wanted to get, honor you with a um, House Joint Resolution, and it's signed by Speaker Cameron Sexton and Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally and Governor Bill Lee. And, you know, I have admired you so much uh, in the past because, A, that you were in politics and um, did so much for Laverne, but also was going back to school. You know, you are a model for a lot of people that maybe at a later age in their life wanted to go back to school. And so not only did you get your degree from Montlow, you got your um, degree from MTSU too. So I think that is a testimony of what a hard worker you are. I mean, while you were serving on the council, you were going to school, you were working, you were giving it all. So you're definitely a role model to women that you can say you can do it all. So thank you for being that. Thank you for everything you've done for Laverne. And we just wish you the absolute best. Thank you so much. You're not going to start crying, are you? I'm trying not to. Huh? <laughs> I want to read a quote if I could. I, th I thought about a quote for, for Melissa. I've watched her career like mm -hmm. Senator White saying. I've watched her as a single mother raising a raising family and going to Motlow and persevere. And then uh, summa cum laude at MTSU, man, that's an accomplishment. Um, I hated kids like that when I was in school. You know, <laughs> she's just such an overcomer. But th speaking of overcomer, I thought about a quote. And y'all probably heard this quote. It's called Man in the Arena by the Theodore Roosevelt. You ever heard it? Yes. You're not going to start crying, are you? No. Okay. I'm crying. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. 
whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat. So congratulations. Really proud of Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. How are you doing, Mike? And then next, we're going to go with our Outstanding Performance Award. We could have Garland Russell and his team come up. Come on up, guys. I don't think this is everybody, is it? Come on up over here. This way the camera can see y'all's beautifully masked faces. So... <laughs> We, I know it's, it's hard to believe with the 80 degree weather, but not too long ago, we had a couple snowstorms, ice storms blow through the area. And uh, these men were out, in some cases, 24 hours or more straight, out working to clear our roads. And it's a very dangerous and uh, very much time sensitive process to do. So this, I'm gonna read this for, as far as they all say the same, but. This is for all of your hard work during the winter storm of 2021 to keep the roads of Laverne clear and as safe as possible. This means, I know this is pieces of paper and ink, but this was people's lives. This was people's safety. This was their income for some people. So when we say thank you, we really mean thank you. Let's get the pack in here. Oh, yeah. Come on over here, get on both sides. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get the short guys like Mr. Dusty up front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to move that's me. Okay. This is a certificate of recognition to the pack. This is the pack for U.S. Taekwondo. And this is for your representation of the city of Laverne in the AAU Virtual Nationals Competition for bringing home more than 80 medals, everybody. medals a little bit <laughs> these kids and young adults are absolutely amazing if you've not ever had a chance to go down and see them in action whether it's at a tournament or even practicing here in Laverne they are absolutely amazing so mr. Dusty I present this to you thank you is there anything you'd like to say uh, we're just really proud of the kids um, <clears throat> Hey kids, um, for all their hard work, um, and thank you guys for having us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate everything y'all do in the community. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
and they are absolutely amazing if you ever get a chance to see them. Moving on to departmental reports. <coughs> Fire department, Chief Beasley. Mayor, Alderman, Vice Mayor, congratulations. Ms. Honeycutt, congratulations, welcome aboard. Uh, I believe we all have a copy of the report for the month. Um, the runs are as average as normal. Um, our response times are staying under what we would shoot for for the month. We've also added um, two categories there to show some of the things that we're doing more so than we have in the past. Uh, we've committed to visiting every commercial occupancy within the city this year. And so this month we've completed 19 inspections and 29 pre-fire plants. So we're in our commercial occupancies, making sure that the occupants are safe, they're meeting the standards, as well as taking care of the firefighters. Anybody got any questions? Thank you, sir. No, thank you. Moving on to the police department. Chief Burrell Davis. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, uh, congratulations, uh, Alderman Hunnicutt, Vice Mayor Nome. Um, you, as you can see posted, you'll see our uh, crime summary of our most uh, serious crimes that we have here in Laverne. And I want to highlight two, two areas for you under uh, domestics as well as thefts. Uh, they're still up for us. Uh, of course, domestic, we kind of contribute to uh, pandemic and everyone being inside. And as far as thefts are concerned, you can also contribute that to um, pandemic as well because of resources are not normally there for uh, for people. Also, uh, looking at the thefts from our motor vehicles, we had uh, 14 thefts for the month. 13 of the 14 of those vehicles were left unlocked, and as a result, three handguns were stolen. And now in the, hand, in the hands of criminals uh, within the community. So I would like to remind everyone to park smart, uh, take your valuables, uh, inside of the house and and remember that time uh, every night to make sure that your vehicles are secure in your driveway. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Moving on to Parks and Recreation Department, Mr. David McGowan. Vice Mayor Board, you, uh, you guys have the parks numbers for the month of March. Um, you see the maintenance numbers filtered in there also, 28 help desk tickets, 415 man hours. Um, probably one of our biggest projects this past month was trying to stay on top of the Greenway with all the bad weather that we've had. Um, so our past event this past Saturday was the Easter drive through um, Upcoming events, April 23rd, that's a Friday, is a movie in the park. Upcoming meetings. April 15th, Senior Advisory, April 19th, Parks Advisory, and April 19th, Greenway Advisory. Um, the Farmer's Market starts um, Saturdays, 8 to 12, May the 15th, runs through September the 11th. A couple of thanks for this past Saturday. Box 100, P PD, Cherie, Library, Don and her staff, Mayor Cole, Vice Mayor No. It's in my head, it's gonna take a few minutes to get used to saying that, but congratulations. Um, Alderman Coates, you and your wife, we appreciate you guys coming out. Alderman Honeycutt, thank you. We saw you there also. Um, appreciate everybody coming out. We had a great time. Any questions? So me and Alderman yeah. Coates was talking before the meeting started, and uh, he's never had the pleasure of being at one of the regular Easter things. Uh, that gets crazy, too. That gets crazy. Yes, sir. But... Uh, as far as organization, what happened Saturday was awesome. I mean, there was absolutely no nothing. But as far as the kids running in chaos, you got a tough decision to make next year. Well, I tell you what we liked about this past Saturday was every child that came through the line got the same amount. What we've had in the past, you have 500 kids, some kids will walk away with nothing. So we've been trying to set some boxes back in the past, but even at that, some, some kids are gonna get 50 eggs, parents out there trying to help them hunt. I think this was well organized. Um, if you could have seen, it was well worth giving up a Saturday morning to see those kids' faces when they came through the line and saw I, Easter Bunny. Uh, 
Miss Donna and her crew from the library did a great job. Yep. Uh, we was also talking. What about the, the big baskets? Two of them have. Two of them were claimed Saturday. Um, a third has contacted the office. Is supposed to come in to, tomorrow, and I think the nine to twelve age. We're still waiting on somebody to claim that. Okay. But um, Kathy, our events coordinator, and Sheila, she's our new admin assistant. Um, they they packaged over a thousand bags to give out, and I'd say we probably gave well over 800 of those out. Um, like I said, we couldn't have done it without all you guys helping. Um, it takes a village, and we had it was got so crazy there with so many cars backed up, um, but the way they kept rolling through without any issues, it, it may be look, you know we may bring it before the Parks Advisory Board and get y'all's thoughts on doing that in the future just because no kid was left out i gotta say i thought it was very well organized and it went off very well obviously the weather helped but as far as the, the structure and getting people through there was excellent well and we knew it started at 10 o'clock we knew at least by 9 15 we were going to have cars in line and they beat us to it at nine o'clock they were already lined up through the park so yeah it was it was a good event for us um it was something we enjoyed doing. Like I said, it was it was well worth giving up, you know, a few hours on a Saturday morning just to see. We didn't see one kid come through that looked like they were disappointed. Did you get your steps in, Alderman Coates? I did. Thank you much. I did appreciate that. <laughs> and I want to just let the, off the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just want to let the best board know what Steve was asking in the cars how many people there were and was steps kept still and was shouting to me, telling him how many people were in the car. So I was yeah. walking back and forwards, and he was laughing at me by standing still. So I got my steps in, but I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to feed off you with the, about the kids. I was at the end of the line as everyone was leaving, and everyone had their windows still rolled down, and each time a car went by, the kids were in the back like, wow, wow, yeah. and they're all pulling it out. So it was great. I really yeah. enjoyed it. It was great, and I think staging the Easter Bunny at the end where the cars were stopping was a big plus. Um, like I said, we didn't see a disappointed face all morning, so uh, we were pleased with the turnout. Our, our say it was extremely well structured. Um, everyone got in and out without a problem. We had uh, members of Box 100 there. Um, Alder, uh, Alderman Honeycutt was there with Box 100. They were there helping direct traffic both on the front end and the back end to make sure everyone got in and out safely. Uh, we were handing out along with your staff, along with our uh, police department and the library, uh, lots of bags and stickers and everything. You, you just constantly saw a swell of smiling faces from all the children there. And even the, the parents were, were laughing at, the, at our Easter Bunny who was dancing and having a good time towards the end so that they could all see him. A few of them even got out of the car and got photos with the Easter Bunny. So it was yep. a wonderful time for everybody. We were real pleased. Um, our Easter Bunny was new to our department, so that was his job this first year. I think he screwed up because he did so well. He's probably going to have to do it in the future. Um, and you guys have probably heard us say this before. We're going to say it one more time. Without Box 100 being there doing what they do, we cannot pull off an event. We just don't have the staff and the manpower to traffic control. Um, without them there putting that in place for us, um, it would have definitely been um, not a pleasant experience. Any other questions? David, do you want to talk to the board real quick about your newly purchased screen and system for movies in the park? Well, the first movies in the park is, um, let me find my date on here. The 23rd. 23rd. And I know I just told you guys, for some reason I can't find it. Anyway, that one was one we had already paid for. That's, we're not going to use our system that you guys let us purchase for that one because that was two rain out days. So we've rescheduled that twice. We were already on the hook for that one. Um, we did pull ours out yesterday, blow it up. Um, it's 30 foot tall, 17 foot long. Yes. And it's a massive. Um, it's bigger than any screen we've used before. Hook the sound system up. Um, Played a sample DVD in the shop, turned out amazing. Um, somewhere down the line, this is something we'll have to bring before the Parks Advisory also. We may just have a test run one night, you know, I don't think we put it out there. It is what it is. We're trying to work through our technical difficulties, you know, so we don't make sure we don't make, make mistakes going forward. 
So we may have a test night in the future where we just show a movie on the football field. Um, with the disclaimer, there may be some hiccups. Well, the quality looks amazing from what I've seen. It was and, great. Uh, it saves the city in the long term money because we're not having to rent other facility or other tools to do it. Yeah. Um, and and I, we were real pleased with it. Um, we contacted the movie company yesterday and I was telling him how massive the screen was and he said that was one of their smaller ones. So I think you guys will be pleased with it. We, we really were. Any other questions about parks and recreation? Thank you, David. Thank you. Moving on to finance department, Ms. Phyllis Rogers. <coughs> Good afternoon, Mayor, new Vice Mayor, new Alderman, welcome aboard. Um, you have in front of you the year-to-date financial reports up through the end of February. I won't go over each uh, fund in detail. Just want to say we're still holding strong in uh, sales tax. Um, only other thing I'd like to mention is that we do start our budget workshops on Monday at 530. So everyone is required to attend. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the library, Ms. Donna B. Bow. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, good evening. For the month of March, the attendance at the library for 26 days was 3,410. That is an increase from what we have had uh, this whole past year with COVID, our daily average was 131. So our numbers are creeping on up. Our circulation was 3,039 items. I do want to compare that to two other years. Uh, last year, March 2020, 2,273. If you remember, around the 15th is when we started having to slow everything down at the library. So we, we're up almost 1,000 from last year. In March 2019, it was 4,684. That's about our normal. So we're getting close. We're getting close and we're very proud of the staff for all their hard work that they're doing in order to get people into the library and you know to help them in any way possible. We're still doing curbside. So if anyone does not still feel comfortable coming in, just give us a call. We'll pull books, we'll pull DVDs, audios for you, and bring them out to your car. Bringing us to the fact of one reason that I think we've had a little bit of increase, we have started doing some really fun reading programs. Our next reading program started yesterday, Spring Fling Reading Program. The library is the place to be April the 5th through May 21st. You come in, check out, auto, uh, check out books, audio books, or DVDs, so you read, listen, or watch. You get entries for each item that you check out. Fill those out, put them in a box, and then twice during this program, we pull out four names, and they receive a $25 gift card to Laverne, here in, in uh, to Laverne, to Walmart in Laverne. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, and that's really fun. In fact, yesterday, Tammy overheard a little guy come in and said, you know, we're here to check out some books because we like those entries. And when Beth was checking them out, or one of my staff members, he said, don't forget my entries. So we're real excited about that. This will be our last special reading program until we hit Tales and Tales summer reading 2021 we're going to do a drive-through kickoff that's going to be saturday june the 5th it's going to be from 10 a.m to 1 p.m more details are coming you will drive through we'll have bags ready for you to pick up uh, that will be the beginning of your summer reading you check out items you come through you get prizes you get entries in order to win some more prizes and you get the wonderful feeling of having all that world of knowledge right there in your hands so we're always excited to offer our programs now it will be different this year because we still are not doing in-house in-person programming 
but uh, Lorna, Miss Lorna, is still going to be working with Jerry, and they're going to be recording story times, and those will be playing. We also will plan on two or three outdoor events so that we can at least get together a little bit that way. And of course, as always, we'll have some make, some take and make crafts. A little bit different than what we usually do. You take it and you make it at home, but we'll have those available. Any questions? Not a question, but I just want to say it's absolutely amazing what y'all do down there. I know uh, my wife and my children are down there on a regular basis, and it is always just smiles from them, and they, they're just amazed at all the different programs. Hearing it, that y'all are all over it with the community, so bravo to you and your staff. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and the staff will too. Donna, you do a great job, you and your staff, and I was on hand in 2003 when the ribbon cutting for that place, and the place still looks great, and I'm just happy to be on the library board with you. Uh, I have the most up respect for you and the staff. Great job, and thank you for the work you do. Thank, thank you. you very much. Good job, Saturday, from you and your staff. What can we say? It was awesome. That was fun. That was, it was. Actually, it was fun, and uh, weather, Mother Nature was good to us, and you guys rocked it. Thank you. Well, well it was very well organized. Uh, I like how David split it off into two lanes. He and Andrew worked hard getting all of this together along with Kathy Melindy. Uh, Kathy is doing an outstanding job and really working close with us. Um, so, but yes, had those two lanes going and we had staff on both sides and we were slinging bags left and right and it was fun. You had your ears perked up for it, I think, didn't you? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I became boss bunny that day. <laughs> because I think one alderman thought I was just a little bit bossy. <laughs> you just had to pull that up, didn't you? You got to keep him in line somehow. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Miss Donna. Thank you. Moving on to the water treatment plant, Mr. Dwayne Lowry. Oh, looks like we're getting Danny. Mayor, Alderman, uh, excuse me, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board. During the month of March, the Laverne Water Treatment Plant treated 105.16 million gallons a day, uh, million gallons, excuse me, of J. Percy Priest Lake water and delivered 93.34 million gallons. That equates to an average of 3.67 gallons per day treated and 2.95 million gallons per day uh, delivered to the community. City of Laverne borrowed roughly 6.5 million gallons from Smyrna before the pump was taken out of service. <clears throat> Repairs continued to be performed on the Paul unit throughout the month of March. The water heater for the hot water tank has been repaired, which has allowed staff to perform the cleaning place on this unit. Multiple CIPs have been performed and desirable results have occurred. The largest obstacle that is currently being faced is located in an air leak. Uh, this air leak will not allow the unit to pass its integrity test due to an increased pressure differential. Maintenance staff has welded, patched, and sealed holes that were in the headers, replaced O-rings uh, on the modules, and replaced valves and hopes to stop the leak. This is a continued effort. Uh, once the air leak has been located and remedied, it will allow the process of startup to continue moving forward in hopes of placing the Paul unit back in service. In the first week of March, the filter rehabilitation project on the 1990 side of the facility was completed. During the, uh, during the first week, the underdrain nozzles were tested for even distribution of air. The new filter media was loaded into each filter. The filters were disinfected and ready to place in service. As of the night of March 5th, the water plant has been running on both sides of the plant. And as of the morning of March 7th, the Smyrna pump has been offline. Three issues are continuing to be worked on at this time. Filter number one is losing prime and starts, stops pulling water into the filter, which causes us to have to reestablish the prime. Filter number six is not able to draw a strong enough siphon to the drain to filter to backwash level. And filter number four rewash valve actuator does not have power going to it. 
Water treatment staff, Tech Coat, and Griggs and Maloney are working together in order to troubleshoot these issues. We have filled our operator one position, and Michael Jerkovich started uh, work on March 29th. We have also filled our facility manager position, and Rebecca Mason starts April 12th. Due to the heavy rainfall and inclement weather that occurred the last week of March, the lake had risen enough to flood the access road down to our intake uh, building. Water treatment uh, staff has monitored the lake level and accessed the building when it was safe to do so. Communication with the Sanford Knob tank was also lost that weekend, and water treatment sta staff made trips down to the tank uh, to the tank site to monitor the level until communication was restored. On the radar, uh, we have the startup of the Paul unit reviewing its integrity tests and hopeful continued operation. And we have on order, we have switch gear and breaker upgrade uh, parts to repair the raw water intake. Any questions? Yes, I've got a couple here. First off, it's, it's glad to hear that we've got this uh, long running project for the nodules and the media finally completed. I know yes. um, last year we started it and funded it and it's there not only to improve our, our water treatment plant, but also to help improve the quality of water, which is a great thing to see. Um, I do want to ask though, I noticed one of the fluoride uh, pumps were offline. Is there an ETA when that's going to be um, repaired if it hasn't already? The issue with that is it's communication with the SCADA. Are, so it's not that the pump doesn't work, it's that we don't have control over it with the, with the SCADA system. So hopefully we can get that remedied before the SCADA project but that's where we stand with it right now. So the pump is, func is functional. It just, we can't get it to work controlled by the computer system. Okay, so is it being just uh, monitored manually then for that pump? At, it could be, uh, I'm not, we could definitely run it manually. We just can't control it, you know, by the computer. So if the other pump were to go out, we could swap out that pump and then we'd have, we still have a backup. We still have redundancy. Okay. A question, Mr. Mayor, just a, on the potassium chemicals used, in 2020 you used 130 pounds of potassium and in 2021 you were at 857. That's a huge disparity. Can you explain what the difference is between those two numbers or what's happened? So if, if you were to be able to see 2019, it would more closely uh, mirror 2021. So we should be, that we're, we're at a, a much better dose for that chemical now for what we were in, in the previous month last year, or I should say the previous year in this month. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So is the Paul system up and running except for the small air leak? Well, that, the air leak is keeping it from running. So the differential pressure deals with with air pressure so the higher the pressure it doesn't allow it to run so what we need to do is find that air leak which has been very difficult to find at this point but once we find that we've been working hard on it we fix that our our belief is that that's our next step to get this back up and running so how long you've been looking for the air leak it's it's been it's been all all month i mean once we got the water heater fixed we found that that it wasn't able to pass integrity. It's gotten closer. There's two steps to it, gotten past one step, and now we continuously keep, keep going above that, that uh, limit. Seems like pressure. since I've been on this board, that thing has been nothing but a headache. And the, at first it was supposed to have been God sent. So. And the Paul unit has had, had issues over the years, and we, we discussed some of that at the, uh, the, budget, at yeah. the planning retreat. Yeah. Um, that it's it's a work in progress and it's going to take more effort to get there with it. Yes, sir, and we are we are working towards that. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to old business. First reading ordinance 2021-04, an ordinance to amend the city of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 32 parcel 4 and tax map 29 parcels 40 and 41 consisting of approximately 226.35 acres located adjacent to the intersection of Blair Road and Waldron Road from an R1 low density residential zoning district to a PDR planned density residential zoning district 
on March 2nd, 2021, BOMA sent uh, back to the Planning Commission this item. Uh, this item was deferred again uh, at the March 30th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. I'll make a motion to defer. Is there a second? It moved. There's a second, second yeah. from Alderman Coates. Alderman Waldron. No. Alderman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman aye. Coates. Vice Mayor. Aye. aye. I vote aye. Deferral passes. Moving on to motion to approve a technology services agreement with Benefits Express Services, LLC. i make a motion to deny. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Alderman Coates. Alderman Waldron. Abstain. Alderman Honeycutt? No. And that's no on the denial. No, I mean, I'm sorry, yes, on the denial. Aye. Vice Mayor, no. Can we have a little discussion? Well, we've gotten past the Pass discussion. Past that? Okay. Sir. Aye. I vote aye. Denial passes. Motion to approve water line easement and a temporary construction easement from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for the 24-inch water line <coughs> along Stones River Road. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Alderman Coates. Any discussion? Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passes. A motion to approve or deny the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Alderman Coates. Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. I vote aye. Consent agenda passes. Moving on to number 12, new business. First reading, Ordinance 2021-05, an ordinance of the City of Laverne to amend Title IV, Chapter Three of the Laverne Municipal Code to establish an updated occupational safety and health program plan, devise rules and regulations, and to provide a safety director and the implementation of such a program plan. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. Second from Alderman Coates. Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. And I vote aye. Mo uh, motion passes. First reading ordinance 2021-06. An ordinance to amend Title I, Chapter I of the Laverne Municipal Code by adding a new section 1-101 regarding vacancies on the Board of Mayor and Alderman. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderman Honeycutt. Okay. Uh, this motion here uh, on the uh, recording vacancies. If we if we had this already in effect, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't have anything to do with what we've done tonight. It would, it's just on if it due to, to elections. If someone dies or someone is resigns, we'll we would still do it the same way we done it tonight. Only thing it was changed if if like the mayor gets loses a term and uh, somebody steps in his place and it's a vacated, then it goes to the the runner up uh, in the election. But it will not change the. Uh, the, the, the way we done it tonight, it'd still be the same. I think a lot of people had a mix, mix to how this was going to do it. This this won't change what we done here tonight. Just change to do to elections. Thank you. Well, just to correct that, um, there's a portion of this that specifically deals with elections, and it says that if there is a vacancy caused by an election, then the third place finisher in the election would go with that vacancy but it does address other vacancies outside of elections, that if we have a person resign, a person die, as you said, then this board would go with a, a process of letters of intent and resumes, which is not something that's currently in our municipal code. This actually puts an official process to it. In the past, boards could just do it however they pleased. They could just 
pick anybody off the street as long as they've lived in the city for a year and they've not had a felony, that was it. Didn't matter if they were, uh, said that they were interested or not. So this actually puts all of that into the municipal code as a actual process going forward in the future. But it, but it still is it basically the same. The, the, the board will pick it. It, it. It's not an automatic like it would be on the, uh, on the uh, if it's election. Election, Correct. the board had no, no, no choice. We'll have to pick the, 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 third, the third person in line. The way this is, you know, you could take application, what are you gonna do, but still the board would, could choose uh, anybody that's it's in the application line. Correct, they could choose anyone in the application process. The one due to the election wouldn't be the board choosing, it would automatically right. third place finisher. I think I was a, was, what I was hearing, people didn't understand, they was thinking that when we passed this, this would be all vacancies, but it's, it's not. And uh, I think it's, it, a lot of people was, must, you know, was mixed up on that. Okay. We well, with that, I just wanna say, We've, I've seen this through the years of me living in Laverne where we've had this issue. This brings consistency to what we're trying to do here. That's how I see it. I mean, so, so it needs to be put in the books. I'm glad we're, we're addressing it now so we can move forward. I agree with uh, Autumn McGrown. I was, I, I was trying to find a word. Consistency is a good word. Any other discussion on this? Uh, just like my, my uncle used to always say you could put Lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, we have a motion to approve, and we have a second. Alderman Waldron? No. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. First reading passes. Moving to number 14. First reading ordinance 2021-07, an ordinance to amend Title Eight, Chapter 3, Section 8-301 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the membership of the Beer Board. And this is just updating the Beer Board in the Municipal Code that would have residency requirements that you should be a resident of the City of Laverne. Need a motion to approve or deny? A motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderman Honeycutt. Any discussion? Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. First reading passes. First reading ordinance 2021-08, an ordinance to amend title 14, chapter one, section 14-101 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the membership of the Planning Commission. Again, this is putting in there that board members shall be residents of the city of Laverne. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Our well, Vice Mayor, no seconds. Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. First reading passes. First reading ordinance 2021-01, an ordinance to amend Title 14, Chapter 5, Section 14-501 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding membership of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates, our second. <coughs> Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. First reading passes. First reading ordinance 2021-10, an ordinance to amend title 20, chapter two, section 20-208 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the parks and recreation user fees. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Our second. Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. I vote aye. First reading passes. First reading ordinance 2021-11, an ordinance to amend Title IX, Chapter 9, Section 9-905 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding mobile food service permits. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Second from Vice Mayor No. Mr. Mayor, would you just explain? I had some phone calls uh, this week. People was, they was uh, not exactly sure what we were talking about with this. Can, can you tell them, just talk a little bit about that, what this is for? Absolutely. So uh, 
this would uh, have the, the rental periods for the multi-purpose building change. So currently it's split between 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. This would change it to a full day, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. The majority of the rentals currently are full day, but they don't get into the building until after 12 p.m. So this helps them manage uh, parking for like the farmer's market, the Saturday's farmer's market, I think you're on the wrong item you're, there. You're on the wrong item, one. Item number 18. Ah, see, I jumped, for, I jumped back one. So this is the one that's background checks then for mobile food vendors uh, for the permit. And currently we're having some difficulty with operators not wanting to sign up. And uh, this kind of puts a streamline with like the city of Murfreesboro where uh, they have an ordinance for uh, permits, but it does not require a background check. Additionally, it may be that um, one person gets a background check as the owner and the permit, but then they have two or three people who operate the facility who aren't background checked. Is that going to, is that going to affect old timers day and all that stuff? Well, this affects the, the permitting process. That's all. So if, if you have vendors, whether it's for the block party, for farmer's market, for, any of our events that want to come, this just, uh, just affects that permitting process, saying that they wouldn't have a back, the person who's requesting the application wouldn't have the background check. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. I vote aye. Ordinance, our first reading passes. Moving on to resolution 2021-09A, resolution to amend the water and sewer billing policies and procedures. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates, our second. Uh, Phyllis, can you explain this? I think uh, a lot of people may have a little issue with this. Can you explain this, please? I can. Uh, this is to kind of define some of our policies and procedures that we currently have in place and to modify them a little bit as far as um, uh, billing, uh, due dates, uh, returns, payments, payment extensions, payment arrangements. And it also covers uh, a new software upgrade that we're going to be going through this summer. Um, and in that upgrade, we will need to bring our billing current. And what that will mean is um, there will be one month that you probably will not receive a bill, but the fo following month you'll receive a bill and it'll have the catch up usage for two months. Uh, the, the current billing uh, is behind six to eight weeks and we, in order for us to go to our new uh, software upgrade, we need to get that billing current. We have the technology now that we've never had in the past to, to be able to do this uh, billing in a more current fashion and previously whenever you paid your water bill you were paying for two months ago and it was very hard in september to um, explain to customers that you were paying for your july bill where you were filling up your swimming pool or watering your lawn or whatever um, so this will bring it more current so that whatever you're paying for uh, this month is actually what you used four weeks ago okay thank you there's no way to put that put that uh, into motion without cutting off the billing for three or four weeks. Correct. Is that there's, correct? That's correct. There's no way for us to uh, bring this bill in current without doing this process. And this board has discussed over the last two years multiple ways to get billing current as we are one of the few if not only miss pallies that's billing in the rears mm -hmm. this much and we've looked at multiple ways whether it was just adjusting it by a few days incrementally over time whether uh to look into writing off that amount of a month which isn't legal we've looked into that and uh, we've basically been exhausting every avenue we can to try to get this to a point where we're current with our billing versus billing several months in behind so this is the kick the can we're not kicking that can no more. we're not kicking the can no more the last board left us with this mess we're going to take care of it 
This has been going on ever since the beginning of utility building because it's you. such a manual process where we had guys that were on, uh, you know, out on, in the field walking from <laughs> house to house reading meters, and we no longer do that. We do drive-by meter reading and uh, can upload that data immediately and can bill immediately. So the technology is there, and we need to utilize it and get away from uh, being in the rears. We've contacted numerous cities to find out how they caught their billing up, and they were like, we, we never had this problem. So evidently they had caught theirs up years ago. We were just that far behind. This also can help us a little bit with our water loss. Uh, with the, the state, we have to get it down so much. So um, that's, that's just another reason. So any other discussion? Okay, Alderman Waldron? No. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Alderman, uh, Vice Mayor, no. Aye. I vote aye. Resolution passes. Resolution 2021-10, a resolution to amend the billing adjustment policy for the Water and Sewer Department. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates, our second. Alderman Waldron? No. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Resolution passes. Resolution 2021-11, a resolution to amend the portable construction water meter policy. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates, our second. Alderman Waldron? Yeah, yes. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Motion passes, or resolution passes. Resolution 2021-12, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Alderman to declare a property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Alderman Coates. Alderman Waldron? Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor, no? Aye. I vote aye. Resolution passes. Resolution 2021-13, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to issue a special event permit for the Old Timers Festival to be held on September 17th and 18th, 2021. We'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second from Vice Mayor No. Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Honeycutt? Aye. Alderman Coates? Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. And I vote aye. Resolution passes. Moving on to appoint or remove board and committee members. We've only got one. This is going to be uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. We've got one term vacant. We have four applicants. I will appoint Jim Hesman to the board. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Appointment passes. Moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Waldron. I want everybody to keep the Boner family uh, in their prayers. Uh, Longtime residents of Laverne, and they're having some difficult time with some health issues. And Don White and uh, Mike Sparks, glad to see them come and uh, be a part of Laverne. Uh, uh, Don and uh, Mike has always been uh, involved with a lot of. Uh, stuff in Laverne and I'm always glad to see them and remind everybody Saturday April the 10th a country ham breakfast at the Laverne Rescue Squad um, everybody come out and support them and I, that's all I'm going to talk about tonight thank you Alderman Honeycutt first off I just want to thank the board for giving me the opportunity to serve alongside you um, I'll do that with honesty and integrity, and I'm looking forward to making changes and making Laverne better. Thank you. Alderman Coates. Just for the rest of the board, just, just it's a very important month for us as we move into the budget discussions. I want to make sure that you know we all think about this. It's very important for the city to move forward, and uh, we have some the time now and some money to get the city moving forward and getting where it needs to be. So I just want to make sure the other board members are on board and be thinking about that because it's a very important month for, the, for this board as well as the city and its citizens. 
That's it, Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor, no. Uh, first of all, thanks, guys. And Vice Woman for putting me in at Vice Mayor. Congratulations. Thank you, Alderman sir. Honeycutt. Uh, remember this date, folks, listening at home. May 1st, Senior Center Yard Sale. It's going to be big. It's going to be epic. Rent you a table. Uh, rent you a booth. Donate lots of stuff to the Senior Center if you have it. Uh, I can't talk about it tonight, but for all of the seniors in Laverne, especially the ones that like to come to the center, there's going to be a huge announcement coming up, hopefully within a few days. I can't talk about it tonight. Also, uh, Excuse I found me, out... Boy. Is that indicating that uh, can I let the word out that you're going to put some bunny ears on next year? Is that what we're hearing? <laughs> Our second that. <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt there, but advice you have. You know I am the vice mayor all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I found out today that uh, our maintenance crew is, uh, after our uh, planning retreat, was that where it was or was it last week when Adam said our building needed a new facelift to match the other one? So I found out today that maintenance is getting ready to give our old senior citizen building a good facelift down there, and, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, but be expecting something really important to come out. Uh, that's all I got, Mr. Mayor. Well, first I want to say congratulations to Alderman Honeycutt and now Vice Mayor No. Um, hopefully you, you will both serve your, your office as well. Um, to everyone who, the other eight candidates, please stay involved. We have board opportunities that come up from time to time, whether it's from people moving, whether it's from people resigning or just terms expiring. Please stay involved. Um, we, we have multiple opportunities to volunteer throughout this community and through events. With that said, we, we are getting ready to head into our budget retreat. Please take some time, go back through all of the requests that have been made by various departments. Let's look at those, evaluate those. At the same time, we also have a corridor study for Waldron Road that was presented to us. So this is the perfect opportunity for us to take steps to keep moving this city forward, whether it's the sidewalks that we've already approved and received a grant for down both sides of Murfreesboro Road with crosswalks, whether it's the dog park, whether it's the uh, FEMA safe room. We have a lot going on with this city and a lot of opportunity to continue to take that forward momentum further for the betterment of everybody. With that said, call this meeting adjourned.